In this video, we're going to be discussing the vertebrobasilar artery insufficiency test. If you want more information on the anatomy of the vertebral and basilar arteries, go and check that out on my channel. I'll put a link to that video in the description of this one. Before you start performing a heavy examination and treatment on a patient's neck, it's recommended that you determine if they have a serious pathology first. And the tests that do that are the vertebrobasilar artery insufficiency test, and then in later videos we'll be covering the sharp purser test, the transverse cervical ligament stress test, and the ALAR ligament test. The vertebrobasilar artery insufficiency test determines whether a patient has a dissection of the vertebral or basilar arteries, which are extremely serious pathologies. A dissection of either of these arteries is serious and a medical emergency because it causes insufficient blood flow to the brainstem. This test can be performed in supine or seated. I'm going to show you the supine version first and then the seated version in just a few minutes. If you're performing this test in supine, the patient's neck and head need to be over the edge of the table, and of course their head would need to be supported by your hands, as you see right here. From this position, the PT is going to passively move the patient's neck into a combination of extension, ipsilateral side bending, and ipsilateral rotation. And the reason I use the term ipsilateral here is to denote that the side bending and rotation need to be toward the same side. So let's take a look at this. From this position, the PT is going to passively move the patient's neck into extension, ipsilateral side bending, and ipsilateral rotation. And the reason I denote this ipsilateral here is so you know that the side bending and rotation are in the same direction. I'm going to do them to the right here in this video. So from here, I'm going to allow the patient's neck to move into extension all the way. I'm actually going to perform the rotation first, rotation right and then just a little bit of right side bending. Now you notice there wasn't much side bending left, and that has to do with Freyette's third law. Remember in Freyette's third law, if you take up motion in one plane, it reduces the available motion in the other two planes. Well, I've already done maximal extension and rotation, so there's gonna be barely any side bending left, but that's okay. And you're gonna hold the patient's neck in this position for 30 seconds. A positive test is going to be production of any of these symptoms right here. So number one, dropping of the arms. Now obviously here in the supine position, the arms are supported by the table. But if a patient reports they feel any weakness in the shoulder girdle, the arm itself, the hands, that would be considered a positive test. Loss of balance. Again, not something we'd see here in the supine position. But in the seated position, if they start to lose their sitting balance, that would also be a positive test. Pronation of the hands, a pronator drift sign. If they experience any of the five Ds, dizziness, diplopia, dysarthria, dysphagia, or a drop attack, that would be a positive test. Nausea and vomiting. And for the vomiting, it doesn't have to be physical vomiting. It could be the sensation or the feeling like they have to vomit. Sensory changes, numbness or paresthesias, and nystagmus, which is the reason that I'm checking in her eyes as I have her in this position. After 30 seconds of being in this test position and monitoring for any of these symptoms, you can bring her out of the test position and have her either lay on the table with her head supported or sit up. Now, without getting into too much of the details here, the sensitivity of this test is poor and the specificity is very good. So in terms of the sensitivity, if this test is negative, you cannot conclusively rule out vertebrobasilar artery pathology. They may still have it. They could still have an active dissection. It just may be that this test did not provoke the symptoms for whatever reason. Okay, So why on earth would you do this test if the sensitivity is that bad? It's because the specificity is pretty good. If this test is positive, you can pretty much conclude that this person has vertebrobasilar artery insufficiency or an active dissection. So not only would further examination and treatment be absolutely contraindicated for a patient with a positive test, but the fact that they're having an active dissection of these arteries means that they are at risk of a stroke or death, and so they need to be sent to the ER as soon as humanly possible. Now before we conclude this video, I want to clear up a few things about how this test actually works on an anatomical level, because it can be kind of confusing. So remember, everyone has two vertebral arteries that traverse up the neck, and those vertebral arteries eventually fuse into the basilar artery, which then goes and supplies the brainstem. 
Now, there are certain neck movements you can do that will stretch one vertebral artery but not the other. So this test position is extension, right side bending, and right rotation. So is it the right vertebral artery that's stretched, or is it the left one? It's actually the contralateral vertebral artery. It's the left one in this case that is stretched. And what happens if you stretch the vertebral artery? Well, if you stretch it longitudinally, meaning like that, right? What happens is the diameter of it actually decreases. And if you decrease the diameter of that vessel, then there's less blood flow going through it. And so now the brainstem has to rely entirely or mostly on blood flow coming from the other side. So in this test position, I have narrowed the left vertebral artery and now the brainstem is relying entirely or mostly on blood flow from the right vertebral artery. Why does that matter? What happens if the patient has right vertebral artery insufficiency? Well, in this test position, we are in extension, right side bending, and right rotation, meaning we're stretching the left vertebral artery and therefore, more importantly, narrowing the left vertebral artery. And if we narrow the left vertebral artery, there's not much blood coming from the left side. So therefore, the brainstem is relying almost entirely on blood flow from the right vertebral artery. But this patient has right vertebral insufficiency. So this test position is going to be provocative in terms of these symptoms. So the bottom line here for this test is that whatever direction you are side bending and rotating, it's going to stretch and narrow the contralateral vertebral artery, and it's going to test insufficiency in the ipsilateral vertebral artery. If we consider the same situation where the patient actually has right vertebral artery insufficiency, but normal blood flow through the left vertebral artery, but this time we do the opposite test position, extension, left side bending, and left rotation, which side are we stretching and therefore narrowing? The contralateral side, the right side. So if we stretch the side, more importantly narrow it, well, we're already narrowing a blood vessel that wasn't really providing a lot of blood to begin with. And so we're relying on the left vertebral artery, which has normal blood flow. So in this case, the patient would probably not experience any of these symptoms because they still have sufficient blood flow through the left vertebral artery. So in theory, you could use this test to differentiate which vertebral artery is insufficient, although if there's a positive test, you automatically send the person to the emergency room. End of story. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.